everybody to this uh, beautiful day and this luncheon. And I guess I'm the maybe the token winery guy and grape growing guy at um, at the luncheon today. Um, of course, we have a Plum Jack Winery, which is just probably two miles south of here, and which is in the Oakville Appalachian, a wonderful Appalachian on the valley floor. And we have um, Cade State Winery, which is on Howe Mountain, our new winery. So very different viticultural areas, very different growing conditions, and we're seeing very different results. Um, I think one thing I've, between uh, Mary and um, David's presentations is that anybody that's going to generalize about a vineyard location or a vintage um, is probably not telling the whole story. Um, and from the wines that uh, David brought today, and, and of course the beautiful Riesling and our 05 Plum Shack um, Reserve Cabernet, shows you that someone says that poor wines are made from cool vintages, um, I'm telling you the truth. I mean, we, we can make wonderful wines uh, from vintages that are cool, and I'm still not convinced that this is a cool vintage, because we have two and a half months to go before, at least at our wineries, we're going to be harvesting fruit. Um, and we like to say that you know, our wines are made in, in September and October, when uh, Indian summer comes and Mother Nature uh, smiles on us, and uh, we can play catch up real quick. So to write off a vintage or to say a vintage is cool and cool equates poor quality, um, grapes and wine I think is, is unfair at this point in time. But so having the, putting my grape growers uh, hat on for a minute, um, Plum Check we just finished uh, Verasion, um, so uh, we're about a week to 10 days behind, um, so we're pretty comfortable with that. And the wines that were made in the past, the 98s the, and farther back, um, I know when I first moved here 25 years ago, uh, the number of, of tools in our tool belt was pretty limited. Um, you kind of raised your hands and danced around and tried to figure it out when the grapes came in and addressed wine quality once the grapes arrived at the winery. Nowadays, today, we have a lot of different tools to address um, what's going on in the vineyard. And we're firm believers in terroir, sense of place, that um, our winemaking team uh, believes that our wines are made in the vineyards. So we need to do the upfront work. And once those grapes arrive at our winery, um, we like to let that quality um, and style be reflected in the wines that we produce at both Plump Jack and Cade wineries. So we're leafing, we're thinning, uh, we're doing everything we can um, to enhance the quality of this growing vintage. We've dropped, um, which I'm a business guy, so I'm not a winemaker and I'm not a viticulturalist. So when I drive into my winery and I see the green or partially green carpet of grapes on the ground, it really makes me cry because that's less wine that we're going to make. But um, our goal is to make great wines. Um, in the past um, at Plump Jack Estate, uh, we would pick our vineyards um, in one day, and we'd get some grapes that were overripe, some that were underripe, and we get the average uh, level of bricks, and, uh, pH, and acidity. But many, many years ago, we realized that Napa Valley is not in the business of making average wines from average grapes. We're, make, we're trying to make great wines from great grapes from great vineyards. And this micromanagement of what we've done here on the valley floor and up at Cade, um, I think will be reflected in the wines that are produced this year. So again, message to leave with, the jury's still out. Um, I'm excited because I think 05, if, if we can <laughs> produce wines like we did in 2005, I'll be more than pleased with, with the quality of wines. Um, my other hat is we're, we're grape growers, we're also grape buyers. Uh, we buy grapes from about 20 different growers throughout the valley, from uh, Tom Kennefick, the neurosurgeon up in Calistoga, <coughs> great crazy guy, um, to um, the Beckstoffer Ranch, some Chardonnay down in the, the Carneros District. And one thing with these challenging times in terms of the economy that um, really makes me proud to be part of the wine business is the collaborative effort that um, growers have with wineries. We realize we have this symbiotic relationship that the vineyards <coughs> need the wineries to succeed and the wineries need the vineyards to succeed. So we've gone to our growers and said, hey, you know, can you help us by dropping crop? Can you help us by doing this, by doing that? The answer is never no. The answer is, of course, yes. Um, in these tough economic times, can you give us extended terms? Can you charge us less for the grapes? Um, the answer is always yes. It really makes me proud to be in this industry because in most industries, when times get tough, it's doggy dog. Everybody's trying to take each other out and get that last penny. But it definitely isn't that way here in, in Napa Valley and in the viticultural, the grape growing and uh, winemaking communities. Um, good news is, is that our business is up significantly this year. I remember last year driving up Valley up, I live in St. Lena, and seeing grapes for sale signs. Um, our growers are telling us that the grape market is very healthy, very vibrant, very alive. Um, that five, 10, 20 ton lots of 
high-end Cabernet is selling briskly. Um, that we're seeing that consumption in uh, the restaurant channel um, over the last, uh, since the beginning of this year is up, five, eight, ten percent. Uh, one of our growers said, Mom, well, champagne. And to me, there's not been a whole lot to celebrate. And uh, it's up five percent. So I think people are cautiously optimistic. Um, and being in this industry, being a vertically integrated business, I mean, we grow grapes and make wine and sell it. Um, we have to look, not this year, but we have to look three and five years out. I mean, the grapes we harvest this year, at least in our one year Cabernet, we barrel age for 22 months and leave it in the bottle for a year before we release it. So I'm excited about three to five years from now. I'm excited about being part of Napa Valley, Napa Valley Grape Growing. That uh, the future is very bright. And we can never forget that one thing that the grape growers <coughs> do is such a great job is to really protect what we have here because these vineyards could be gone really easily. And Napa's small, what, 45,000 plant acres? If you compare that to other counties, other Appalachians around the world, we're really a drop in the bucket. People seem to think because of the great brand recognition Napa Valley Vineyards have and Napa Valley Wineries have, that we're this huge, huge growing area. <laughs> and I get so many surprised looks when I take folks up to Cade, our winery up on Howe Mountain, and we look down, and they say, God, Napa's so developed, and you go, the trailer 29 and there is some development but you get up and beyond that and you look how rural Napa Valley is and how we really need to protect it so um, the message grape growing grape selling is very active uh, there's very few tons of unsold grapes uh, the marketplace in general is very optimistic about um, the future and this year in general and um, again cool vintages don't necessarily equate um, to um, poor quality of wine <laughs> Again, as we've proved today with the wines we've had today. So, um, introduce John Rule, and uh, any questions at the end?